So I am Jyotishman Dasgupta, the Wednesday Colloquium Coordinator, and I welcome all of you uh, for this special NSF Asset Colloquium that is being uh, hosted uh, by me and Dr. Satyanarayana, who represents the Asset Colloquia Forum. If you remember, uh, a week from uh, previously, we had actually used the Asset Colloquium mm -hmm. Forum to uh, communicate to you about the latest Mumbai Cero, um, Cero survey results. Uh, that was uh, given by Professor Ullas Kultur and uh, Professor Sandeep Juneja. So uh, just, to give, uh, just to give a little bit of a brief background of the NSF Wednesday Colloquium series, um, the NSF Wednesday Colloquium series is as old as TIFR itself. It's actually attended by all scientists at TIFR, ranging from string theorists, astronomers, uh, physicists, chemists like me, um, as well as biologists. Uh, today we have, of course, a very special talk relevant to the times that we are living in, uh, not the 2020 BC, BC means uh, before Corona, but the current pandemic age. Um, so to uh, sort of enumerate one of the most important uh, paraphernalia that you carry now, um, that is a mask, uh, I, we have invited Professor Arnab Bhattacharya uh, for this special colloquium. Uh, who is going to talk about some of the work that has been done at TIFR associated with uh, decontamination and reuse of uh, the N95 mask. To introduce uh, uh, Professor uh, Anna Bhattacharya, we have our colleague, uh, Professor Shankar Ghosh, who himself has been part of this very important work, uh, and he will introduce Anna for this specific colloquium. Shankar? Thank you, uh, Jyotishwan. Uh, we all know Arnab as a semiconductor person and who could give you a gyan on gan, which is gallium nitride anytime. Uh, sorry, Arnab, it's, it's kind of click from your own talk. Uh, uh, but he tops it up with a huge passion for science popularization. Uh, to see Arnab running uh, this Chai and Y is really a pleasure. Uh, and I have seen him through this period of the last few months. And uh, I realized that how popular this Chai and Y guy of ours is. Like, you know, you want to get something done and just because of his Chai and Y, how well connected he is to the city and how well known he is in the city. So if you want to have a favor when everything is done and out, people just do it for him because of the Chai and Y connections that he has built over time. Uh, over the problem, I'll not tell you about the problem under Will, but we did make progress fast. What that did not surprise me that we are doing fast progress, but what surprised me was how much I enjoyed working with Arnab. I want to believe ours was a good team and it was because Arnab could visualize this big picture. Now you could do something in the lab, but it was Arnab who quickly built up this network between hospitals, mask manufacturers, and even activity beyond the national boundary. Uh, this gave relevance to the work that we were doing. Uh, one morning, he would come and talk to us about the decontamination process that was being done in the interiors of Maharashtra. The next day, I would, I would hear from him that what, about the work that he's doing in Bangladesh. And the third day, he would be busy giving a webinar somewhere, explaining people on the data that he has got. Uh, so science is a social endeavor, and we often kind of underestimate how important it is as to enjoy science in an, in an environment where many people participate in it. Uh, thank you, Anup, and everyone else in the team, Emrose, Hirsch, Satyanu, Soman, and Dove for the wonderful time that we had in the past few months in BB30. Thank you, Anup, and I'm looking forward to your talk. Uh, thanks a lot, Shankar. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, introduction. And thank you for remembering that my last colloquium in TIFR, uh, the last Wednesday colloquium, also had a byline which was a joke. I'm also known as the joker of TIFR and the punster around here. So the last time, kindly do not mute me, Jyotishman. Uh, so, okay, last time I talked about my work on semiconductors and that was subtitled GAN on GAN, uh, which at least the Bengalis would have got. And this time I thought we need a Marathi subtitle. So we have Maskari Nahi, Maskari, and um, I'll hopefully tell you the work of masks that we've been doing. 
clearly this is the era of masks and hopefully if you are around you are wearing either one of these surgical masks or some cloth around your face or a N95 mask or some mask and I'm going to tell you stories of decontamination and reuse not just of N95 masks but also of these uh, surgical masks. So um, uh, before we begin of course uh, you know, Shankar has been sort of my partner in crime for the last uh, more than five months, and uh, I have pretty much, uh, you know, had taken over a bay of his lab, uh, doing all kinds of stuff. And um, as he pointed out, a big team of students helped us out, and later on, staff in our lab. Uh, I would also really like to say a huge, uh, you know, appreciation for the doctors at Tata Memorial Hospital. Uh, not only did they we all the masks that we got for testing came from there, but they have been fighting with, uh, you know, not just coronavirus, but coronavirus and cancer together, and you know, handling this thing most brilliantly. And a lot of people, a lot of people, sort of came into this at various stages of the story to help. Ronak Sataria is one of them from the Spiral Living Sciences who provided us something. We'll, we'll talk about it in a bit. And um, of course, there's n95decon.org, which is a amazing sort of collective of people across the world who've come together to uh, try their best to do something and help in this time of uh, the pandemic. And you will not believe uh, the number of people who have helped us in ways which will get clear as during the story. And uh, finally, I think I should also thank my family because um, during this time, they've really been, uh, you know, I should have been more at home and helping out with things there, but I've been in the lab and uh, working on masks. Okay, so uh, the stories I want to tell you today are, of course, development of our little gizmo that is sitting right here behind me, which uh, this pink ball that you see there, uh, the TIFR mask tester. And using this, we have done a lot of experiments in TIFR uh, on decontamination of uh, 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 masks, which we transferred later on to the uh, Tata Memorial Hospital. But beyond that, there's been a lot of fun stuff also that's been happening. And the fun stuff has been uh, um, uh, experiments in the kitchen, experiments with solar cookers, a lot of things. And if one, you know, once you have a test set up like this, uh, people ask you to do um, all kinds of interesting things and develop collaborations. And one of the key sort of uh, you know messages I have is that this is a period which, despite all the you know gloom of the COVID-19 pandemic has led to some spontaneous collaborations and some you know, very nice work done by people together. And I think that's a wonderful spirit that has happened over the last uh, few months, and I just wish it continued. So let me also tell you what I will not talk about today. Um, uh, along with uh, mostly Shankar and his students, uh, we did a lot of work on uh, the physics of how N95 masks work and understanding that uh, try to make a setup which could recharge masks. So the idea is you can take a mask, you can toss it in the washing machine, wash it, the efficiency degrades a lot, and then you can recover it by sort of you know, recovering uh, uh, the charge on it, and that was used to sort of make a prototype of a smart mask. This is almost going to appear in press in the next week. So, you know, you can ask Shankar about it. Um, I mean, it's, it's basically his baby. I'm not going to talk about this. I'm mainly going to talk about decontamination. That is what really got us so let's start at the very beginning. You know, masks are not something with you. right now we are all wearing them, but masks have been around forever. Every culture, every place, every geography has had its own mask. Right from 7000 BC, the first mask, till today you have masks which are used for disguising yourself, you want to rob a bank or something, or, you know, in a play, for performance, for entertainment, and also obviously for protection. The main use of a mask is obviously for protection, and protection is in many forms. In the, if you look at the, the Inuit in uh, the northern uh, latitudes, where there's a lot of, uh, you know, have ice and there is sun, it reflects, you need to protect your eyes, so they had to make masks to protect themselves. Now, even from protection from pathogen, right, when we had the plague in the 17th century, the hallmark of a plague doctor, how would you know it's a plague doctor, is because he had to have a beak shaped mask. Okay, and uh, they would keep some. Uh, you know, in those days, even the word malaria comes from bad air. They believe it was bad air. Of course, they didn't know what was there in the air. So this beak-shaped mark, actually, they kept some, you know, nice smelling oils in it or something. Well, that is 17th century. In the 21st century, we obviously have all our COVID warriors, the nurses and doctors and hospitals wearing masks. And, of course, uh, 
uh, you have all of us, the public, wearing masks as well. And masks come in all kinds of shapes and sizes and colors and different Arnab, types. Yes. Arnab, I'm sorry to disturb you. Your audio. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Jerry. Your yeah, audio Jerry, is me. audio is having you know a little bit of uh, uh, small disturbances, so you can adjust your mic uh, or such. Okay. A way. It's more. Sure. Is it, all right. Is this better? Now it is better. Yes. Okay. I will just hold the mic here then. Okay. okay. Uh, so there are there are you know tons of different kinds of masks. What's the difference between these little cloth masks that you can stretch at home, between an N95 mask, between a surgical mask? What's the difference between all these masks? Okay. And let's see, what do you, if you want to make a mask, what do you really need? What must the mask do? A mask must, of course, see the first thing, it must keep out all the stuff that I do not want to breathe in. So if there are particles, bacteria, viruses, you know, whatever it is, dangerous chemicals, or whatever the, the use of the mask is, it should keep out the toxins or whatever you don't want to breathe in. On the other hand, there is a constraint that whatever you're, you're obviously adding a filter element, it should not make breathing very difficult. So the breathability is another very important consideration. It shouldn't add too much effort to you know, your normal breathing pattern. And obviously, given that you want to use your mask for a very long time, uh, there are practical considerations of how comfortable it is because that's what's going to determine whether people actually use it. I mean, if it hurts your ears or it, you know, your glasses get fogged up, it's going to be difficult to use. Of course, the main thing is filtration and what you want to filter besides how you do it. So now if we consider masks meant for something like a, uh, you know, COVID kind of situation where you have pathogens, uh, you could have bacteria, viruses, you know, pollen grains, all these things come in different sizes. So this is a, a logarithmic scale. So you have things which are typically, uh, you know, most of the the uh, uh, the bacteria and, and the dust particles, etc., are all above one micron. So, in fact, if you've been following pollution news, they always talk about PM 2.5 and PM 10. That's just the number of 2.5 micron particles and 10 micron particles around. Viruses are, of course, much smaller. They are about you know uh, uh, 100 nanometers, 0.1 micron, and of course, mostly the virus is not coming isolated by itself. It's coming in a droplet, in a cough droplet or a saliva droplet when somebody's speaking. So the droplets are much larger, but the virus itself is 0.1 micron. Now, if you want to filter this, it depends on you know where you are. For the larger particles, basically what one does is very similar to a sieve where you've seen on a construction site, people are filtering sand or in your home, you might have a chhanni where you take you know some basin or something and, and, and strain it out, uh, where you have a filter which allows particles of a certain size smaller than a certain size to go through, larger than a certain size, you know, zero order approximation. If I have a small needle, it will still go through. I mean, you know, let's assume particles are spheres for now, be good physicists. Uh, you know, you can, you will, you will stop these particles. Now, this is fine up to about a micron or so. Now, if you want to filter sub-micron particles, just making your mesh finer and finer is not going to work simply because you will not be able to breathe through it. The effort required for breathing through that will be very high. So what we do is we use a neat trick of using electrostatic charge, just like you can rub your comb and attract, uh, not on a humid day and not in Mumbai, but you know you can electrostatically attract particles. You use a combination of mechanical filtering and electrostatics to get attract these very fine particles. And that is the main difference between the fancy, this kind of an N95 mask and a simple surgical mask. The idea is most of your cloth masks or surgical masks are trapping particles where the filtration depends on effectively your pore spacing. On the other hand, if you made your pore spacing too small, it wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to breathe. So what you do in an N95 mask is you actually have a very fine mesh of fibers, which their particle sizes might be in microns, but they are charged and hence they attract these small particles. And because of this, you get the first problem when you want to reuse a mask. If you wash it in soap water or something, you can you know uh, sanitize your hands by washing them for 20 seconds in soap water or taking some alcohol-based rub and you know rubbing it. These charges are, are removed, and this makes reuse a challenge because you will degrade the efficiency of your mask. So the basic, let me just get this point again, and this is a slide straight from the uh, CDC. Uh, the difference between a surgical mask and an N95, the N95 is tested for very small particles, and this is basically for large droplets. The main purpose of this, the reason it's called a surgical mask, is it's in the surgery the doctor wears it. It's meant to prevent your own saliva particles or whatever from going outside. But as the N95 particle is designed to prevent very small particles being breathed, breathed in. And hence, 
by definition this is loose it has gaps at the side where the air comes out of by design whereas an n95 is tight fitting and seals against your face okay now one one real important issue is the small particle versus large particle and uh, you know when you and this is this is one of the biggest causes of confusion in the for consumers because surgical masks are generally qualified or they are you know when when they need to pass a certain benchmark the benchmark is the filtration efficiency which is above 95% at 3 micron size for the n95 respirator it's 95% at 0.3 micron 10 times smaller and this is a cause of massive confusion as we will uh, come to later okay uh, okay now wait wait i said i was going to tell you stories and this doesn't sound like a story it seems like i've just gone directly to a lot of data and a lot of something so i should tell you a story so let me sort of backtrack and tell you a story because i you know told shankar and he decided that i should tell you stories so act one of the story is about about making a mask filtration efficiency testing setup so let's start at the very beginning end of march india goes into this lockdown and everything is shut and this i think is a nice period because you know i thought i would probably get a lot of work done there are lots of tons of papers piled up that i have you know students have written i haven't corrected i should get all those things uh, read them get them done um uh, i thought you know i'll have some time to go around i could look at you know birds from the window i was on twitter and of course yes i did think we should do something with um, uh, uh, surendra we made some sanitizer in the lab and gave it to technical services and security and all the stuff i didn't i didn't you know i thought yeah that's going to be it and then on april 3rd we were asked if we could work on this masks and decontamination and you know i have worked on masks for a very long time but in a completely different setting i mean uh, the, this is the first one of the first talks i gave in tifr in july 2000 almost 20 years ago my post doc seminar uh, was about a mask in fact about not using a mask or or using a very simple shadow mask to uh, Uh, to do a no lithography diode laser processing and that's the only thing i knew about masks i knew nothing about you know these kind of masks at all but i said fine we'll do something about masks okay now you said you'll do something so you got to start reading up and figuring out whom to catch so shankar was around i caught him and over the next few days we were brainstorming how do we measure the filtration efficiency of masks and you know uh, clearly um, uh, commercial testers they are very expensive they are not available in india what do you do and we could read all over the place that hospitals were running out of these masks masks and they they desperately needed to somehow decontaminate and reuse them and we were thinking where exactly do we fit in all this you know clearly we are not biologists we are not medical people you know people know how to zap the virus and kill it you know they, that with that we will we will we will figure out let other people figure that out on the other hand no matter how you kill your virus you need to make sure that the filtration efficiency has not degraded the fit of your mask has not degraded so the filter is you know still intact let's look at you know that's more of a mechanical problem that's more of uh, an engineering problem that's something else which we can probably like let's let's look at whether we can measure filtration efficiency and then of course we were reading around checking around who else is doing this kind of stuff and uh, um you know i found there is this wonderful website called n95decon.org a group of people who had come come from various places to work on different aspects of uh, you know serving the literature finding what can be done Uh, coming up with protocols uh, and uh, this was this was uh, with stuff okay so what is the simplest way you can measure filtration efficiency just imagine that you have and by the way this is the only equation i have in the talk so don't don't get scared uh, i have in the ambient air there are some number of particles of a certain size okay so there's some n ambient number of particles around me and i you know suck this air through a mask the mask will trap some of the particles and on the other side i will have n mask which is a smaller number of particles on this side and if i can get a particle counter i could count the number of particles in room air and the number of particles coming through the mask and yes i realize we do have a particle counter because we have a clean room in our uh, condensed matter physics department so i went there and got the clean the counter from the clean room we put a little funnel Uh, with a rubber band uh, what you see here is a rubber band uh, mask material this is a typical green surgical mask material that you get at in the in the tifr stores it's basically this mask um and uh, we taped it and we could measure the particle counts coming and on the different channels and different sizes what are the particles coming in and hence you can calculate the efficiency shankar was very thrilled uh, 9th april in the evening he sends a mail you know to shadipto who got us into this thing we have data and yes of course 
we had tested um, you know many of the common cloth materials that we had around uh, and we had at least some way of knowing uh, that yes we could measure measure it uh, and now that, yes uh, still i think we have problem with your uh, audio uh, first thing is maybe you have to put a okay. little bit uh, far but you know it is this static uh, sound uh, which is coming up with this Should I just try my laptop by itself without having the Bluetooth? Did you switch off your cell phone? Uh, my cell phone is on airplane mode. Yes. No, no, no. Uh, on the, ha, huh, I see. Okay, no YouTube running there, right? Uh, no YouTube running there. It's on airplane okay. mode. Okay. You know, it's like that static tick 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 sound. You know, that is what is uh, kind of accompanying your. Okay. Uh, one thing I can do is I can try and just use my computer audio. Um, okay. Okay. Let me just see if that's better. Uh, give us. Actually, now it is looking better. Computer audio sounds better. Uh, hi, where do I get the controls on this? Yes, Rajiv, uh, I'm just saying your computer audio sounds better. Yeah, yeah. One sec, one sec. I'll just use the thing, and I'll use the headset to hear you now. Uh, okay, so now I am on the internal microphone. I'm okay. The headset mic. It was some kind of noise which you have to mask. Yeah, now it is better. Okay, now it's better. Fine. I'll speak. <clears> so you have masked the noise. Okay, great. uh sorry about this and please do interrupt because i have no feedback this is this is really crazy to give a talk like this where you cannot see it there's no audience uh i'm just looking at the my lab system and uh, um i have no feedback at all so unless i i'm not and because of the yeah. screen share audio. i can't even see the chats so uh, and my phone is off so you can't even whatsapp me please increase uh, so um, um uh, satya are you okay with this level is this good are we good to yeah. go yeah a little bit increase volume if you can Uh, how? Um, okay. Otherwise, we'll do for you. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So let's let's continue. So now, ninth April, lots of fun things happen. Uh, wait, I need to go back. <coughs> Amazing things happen in fact. So um, I send an email very early in the morning. Uh, I send this email to Manu Prakash at Stanford, who is part of this N95 Decon Consortium. Uh, he has through COVID gyan, you know, I figured that he is also involved in this. Six twenty-three in the morning. i sent manu an email saying that you know can we join your thing can we please listen to it because there's publicly available data but i i know there's a lot of internal discussions going on which i don't have access to and i get a reply at 634 saying that yes with you know you can join our community asap we are thrilled to have you etc etc i will talk to you tonight and um, in a little bit i you know we get shankar added as well and um, you know by 753 we are sort of in the slack channel and i can read all the discussions going on and the best part of it is that day in the evening at 8:30 uh, they have these 8:30 calls 8 a.m pacific i could join in this group meeting for the low and middle income country discussion and the discussion is on how do you test mask can you make a low cost testing setup that exactly was the discussion going on that day and uh, the biggest thing was yes the idea is exactly the same it's the same idea which we have but you have these air quality monitors and at least in california at that time because of the wildfires it seems these monitors were widely available and very cheap and i was told you will definitely get them they are the most popular monitors will get them so just get one of these monitors they are like 20 dollars and you you should be able to build your own setup very easily okay sounds great on 10th of april another fantastic thing happened i i am normally not always on whatsapp i'm rarely I, if you look my status it's like i check whatsapp twice a day of course not now now i check it more often but for some reason i was on whatsapp and i get this message from the director of tata memorial hospital pramesh i think he is he is online all the time you send him a message any time and within like you know 5 minutes he's replied to you so pramesh sends me a message again this is 934 saying that can we have a zoom call with you at 10 o'clock and luckily i am there and you know at 9:49 he sends a link for a zoom call at 10 and we have a meeting and you know they explain to us what exactly is needed at the hospital and um, i was like not yet figured out everything but for some reason i said yes we'll do something we'll figure it out so now we have to figure it out i have committed to pramesh that we are doing it and i need this thing we need to build this testing setup because they are getting masks but they don't know how good or bad they are okay so now i need a particle counter i need to get this particle counter i'm googling all over mumbai where can we get it the problem is all my standard i mean i know the electronics market but lamington road is closed loharchal is closed all the places where i would have normally gone and got it all the people i know is closed 
so then i just google go to india mart look at vendors and start basically cold calling them things hello i'm from tifr i need to do this do you have these things you know something now many of them are closed uh, you know ha theek hai you know kitna piece chahiye stock mein nahi hai in lockdown something is not working okay the fourth person i call is ronak sutaria from respirer living sciences and i explained to him that you know here i'm a prof from tifr i want to do this one he says yeah i know you are arnab from chai and why right i have attended your program bolo kya chahiye you know what do you want you want the thing we'll help you i have an equality monitor we can get this and that was amazing that just boosted my you know enthusiasm for this whole thing you know so to was just such a such a huge thing so after lunch on that day we got talked to uh, mr joshi in security we arranged a pass for him we got him picked up from home to, uh, you know got him to his factory got him to open his factory get us the devices brought him over to tifr and he sat with us and you know through the evening pretty late we actually made a prototype and you know initially in the lab in shankar's lab we were experimenting with laser scattering trying to you know build do our own stuff eventually we had this little device that we get we had a prototype that could do this job in a day it of course improved tremendously the you know signal to noise ratio got better etc so and we had it tested okay but abhi bhi picture baki hai don't worry this is not the end there's a lot of things still to go now once you have a mask tester you can do a lot of stuff one of course is you can send feedback to the hospital we've always been you know we we get masks from them very very often uh, lots of people are donating masks to the hospital there's no way to know you know they're donating in good faith but there's no way to know how good or bad they are so um, uh, you know uh, and thankfully we have dr tushar bora who lives in our colony who is our conduit for getting these masks across um, uh, and you know we've been interacting almost on a daily basis so you we were uh, interacting the hospital we could also do these cool experiments on you know studying the recharging and physics and things like this we could help other people who are building uh, trying to make masks to test their materials out so we worked with many groups i'll give you some examples later uh, we could also help startups like um, things to try and apply for uh, you know government funding to get money uh, through the programs that were available and we could do lots of fun things and the fun things you will see um, i'll come to the fun things in a bit okay but of course remember i said we want to make this as simple as possible and as uncomplicated as possible the air quality monitors they work very well of course they work you know perfectly well the only thing is that um, they are uh, sort of uh, you know meant for centrally monitoring pollution levels across a city they average data you know once in an hour send it to a central database here i want something really quick so we decided we would also try and independently in parallel make our own little tester with very standard components with using this particle counter of course and a very standard what is these iot microcontrollers that are used uh, based on the esp8266 and we can use this to read data from the from the thing and we can put it up and what we have is basically uh, this little box here okay so this box it has a small plastic dabba in the center here which has the uh, counter it has a plastic ball this is again stolen from stuff at home uh, you, you can probably see there is a the pizza box uh, which you get the three legged stool that you get inside a pizza box here is to prevent the mask getting stuck there i mean everything is there's a little flow meter to check what it is it's connected to a pump and i can measure i can work with this okay so uh, what you see is a schematic diagram on the screen there's a pump we we pull air through this uh, mask on which is attached to a ball now obviously i don't have a phantom of a face we just use a, using a ball ball is not a face but still it, it works and um, uh, uh, we have a pressure sensor to tell us the difference in pressure which is like the breathability metric and we can measure particle count now there's one more thing which we had to add with time which is a standard medical nebulizer now earlier when the thing started end of march april uh, the lockdown had just started mumbai air was very polluted still there were enough particles in it what we found through the months is that the air in mumbai has gotten cleaner and cleaner and we didn't have enough particles we would have to integrate for a long time so we actually now use a nebulizer we put saline solution into a nebulizer and uh, use that to generate particles and uh, that's what is is uh, uh, okay so that's the the only addition that has been made is the is the nebulizer uh, because the levels of dust have gone all right and we have a very simple computer interface which plots these particles i have some cursors i can say this is the part which does not have a mask 
this is the part where I've masked. You can see that you know when the I'm sucking air directly from the ambient, uh, the particle counts. It's gonna there's some noise of course, uh, so you have to integrate for a while. This is just a sample data. Uh, that's the particles in air. Once I put a mask on my uh, a holder, I have a much reduced number of particles, and then I can calculate the efficiency, and it shows you what the efficiency is. A very very simple arrangement tool. And you can you, this works of, of Wi-Fi, it can work of your mobile, any anything. Just a very simple HTML uh, interface. Okay, and we just wanted to make sure that anybody who wants to do something like this can do it. So we put everything out open source, all the design documents, drawings, source codes, whatever you need to make this. Everything is on GitHub. Anybody can use this and build something similar to this uh, if they want. Okay, so now we have a mask tester. And the moment you have a, something like this, you start learning things. And the first thing we learn is that fit is everything. You can have the world's best mask, but if it doesn't fit nicely on your face, there's going to be a lot of leakage from the side, and that's going to, you know, uh, not be very useful. So, given that, of course, our, you know, a, a, an N95 mask, you get them in two types. You get these what are called duckbill masks, which open up like this, like a duckbill. Or you get these uh, sort of cup-shaped masks, which are which go like this. Okay, they are obviously designed to match your nose, so it's likely better. We have a ball. Now, on a ball, it's not going to seal perfectly, but if you don't allow it to seal, there is leakage from the sides, and you will measure only you know 84%. What we do is we take paper tape and go all around it, seal the sides, and then of course you're down to 96% what you expect. For this. Okay. Now. The idea that leakage is important has been looked at by others, and many people have said that you can take, you know, a high-quality surgical mask. If you take a high-quality surgical mask, put it on your face and seal it, you can almost get to N95 performance, and that is correct. We did do some demonstrations, I mean, some trials. Um, so uh, this is a, a, a standard green cloth mask with a, a rubber little brace. This is a, a rubber brace, and again. These braces have been cut. This orange one has been cut from a uh, uh, the gloves, the orange gloves that you get for acid work. Uh, the black one, uh, thanks to Joshi Jean Security, is an old car tire tube lying, um, you know, behind C block. Uh, so uh, we cut these rubber things. With this, you can tighten up a handkerchief or whatever else and, and prevent leakage from the sides. That improves your filtration efficiency by a lot. Anyway, but it's not very comfortable. That's that's a different, different thing which needs to be solved. So. That is the mask tester. Now we have a tester, and uh, uh, Act Two is obviously the whole idea was to do decontamination. So, what's the best way to decontaminate and reuse a mask? Remember, what we want to do is kill the bugs, pathogens out, but we don't want to change the filtration efficiency. Okay. So, uh, a little bit of some some things. Now, remember that all through the last whatever number of years, twenty odd years, that these masks are available, these masks. Whether they are surgical masks, whether they are N95 masks, they are designed for single use. And because they are designed for single use, it's not has it has not been in the manufacturer's interest to try and make reusable masks. I mean, why do I, you know, I have more business if people use the mask and throw it away. So it's been designed as a, you know, an easy throwaway product. Now, obviously, now that you have a crisis situation where you do not have enough masks, you have to figure out some way of decontaminating and using them. Now, you should always be careful because at least in the medical literature. Decontamination means 99.9% removal of pathogens. Sterilization is a much stricter condition. It means 99.999% of pathogens. And uh, you will be amazed of people selling, for example, UV boxes for sterilization. That's what they call it. And they are nowhere. I doubt that even they, they do decontamination. But, but uh, just remember that they're actually technically different terms. And often, it's not the material of the mask that's the limitation. The material of the mask can often be decontaminated several times. You have problems at the place where the strap is stuck. If the strap comes off, it's no use, right? If you have a cup-shaped mask and it deforms, that's no use. So uh, the material is not often the limitation; it's the fit of the mask. And anyway, if you remove and put on a mask ten times, it's going to, you know, deform the mask thing. And uh, there are many reports on different techniques that are available. And you know, given the flood of literature that's been there in the last three or four months, you have to be really careful and do things yourself and verify things before you try anything out. So first, let's tell you what doesn't work. Simple, alcohol, alcohol-based hand rub, disinfectants, all that thing, they will bleach the charge out, they will not work. Similarly, soap, water, and detergents, they will remove the charge. This is for N95 masks, they will not work. You can use bleach, 
the same problem bleaches after all the water solution it reduces efficiency even more important if there's any residue of the bleach left you'll have a chlorine smell which is not good similarly ethylene oxide which is a very standard thing in the in the medical community for sterilization it's it's if there's any residue left it's it's not it's very dangerous uh, gamma rays is has been investigated tried it will definitely kill your virus but it also damages the polymers in the mask so that kills the efficiency as well sunlight by itself the uv component the uv a or b in the sunlight or tanning lamps that doesn't kill the virus heat in the sun is something else which we'll come to later but sunlight by itself is not got the uv that will damage uh, the dna the only things which work one is hydrogen peroxide vapor now this is a very large scale process there are some places we produce can process 100000 masks at a time this is an industrial scale process with hydrogen peroxide vapor the easiest thing is fine if you take a mask wear it today and just leave it in a airy place and come back to it after 6 days the virus people have studied how long does it stay on a surface on any surface it doesn't survive for more than 5 6 days so if you use it after that you're safe heat is one heat denatures proteins heat can be used and ultraviolet c light ultraviolet c which is around 260 nanometers this is where you hit the dna uh, that is there uh people are trying to use autoclaves but autoclaves have a you know the temperature is much higher and it's very easy to damage a mask and uh, liquid hydrogen peroxide also there is some you know recent data available but not not uh, conclusive for an indian context we felt that it's either time to sleep the mask for a while which is what the hospital was doing or heat or uv which were the more uh, practical options that we had so what we tried was to develop a heat based n95 decontamination uh, process and uh, thankfully shankar was kind enough to permit me to use a oven he has a nice big box oven in his uh, lab which we set at about 70 degrees that was sort of the uh, um, you know suggested temperature uh, and uh, we first calibrated the temperature uniformity of the oven and we wanted to make sure it's a mask temperature so we stuck temperature probes on masks and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, tried to decontaminate them for five cycles for one hour cycles you you you, you want to take the condition for the worst case so that you know no matter what it is one hour it should work uh, from all the reports that we had read and and check whether it works now i should point out a few things uh, you know it's amazing let's look at this this large temperature and humidity sensor over here now i wanted a temperature and humidity we had a lot of temperature sensors but we didn't have humidity sensors which could go up to an oven temperature i found a company in vasai that had them uh, the person said yes you can come i can't i mean it's there i have a couple at in the factory you can come and take it so um, uh, surendra kolkarni was nice enough to drive up all the way to vasai and get it and the moment this is deep electronics the moment he heard that okay you're trying to do this for covid 19 for masks for hospital or something he refused to take payment for it and these are small industries who are themselves you know during the lockdown under deep stress uh, and he here was something he just said no no please take this you don't have to pay me for it okay and then of course this temperature sensor i mean i am the most messiest pers- person on the in the world if you've seen my lab but i i i know we have temperature sensors a lot of these pt hundreds are not lying in our lab so you call mahesh gokhale at home mahesh will tell you yeah you go to 104 open the middle cupboard third rack uske piche there's a brown dabba open it second box you will find the sensor and you will find the sensor so you know you you it's just amazing how things have been working in spite of the lockdown but also you should hear some fun stuff so uh, the thing which you don't you will never see even if we write all this up is the the you know the outtakes as they call them so uh, the first time we tried heat i was very upbeat we have these little water boilers that we used to make chai so i said let's just hold it on top of that and in 5 minutes the nose clip of the mask just popped off okay so that one was the first first try then of course uh, remember i didn't have this this uh, uh, humidity sensor with an external high temperature probe so everybody seems to have these uh, temperature humidity meters in their lab and here is one from w107 qmac vijay's lab i had told him i would take it he said yeah yeah go ahead now the problem is even though it says it's up to 80 degrees uh, once you put it in an oven at 70 degrees you get moderna uh, i have replaced his sensor by the way uh, and then we want to maintain humidity and there are very old papers saying that if you have a saturated salt solution it could be sodium chloride calcium chloride many different salts you will maintain a stable humidity above it that's supposed to work i don't know how it works but when we tried it so this is just common salt nacl solution in a beaker i kept it in the oven and overnight the salt crystals climbed up the sides they went all over the oven 
and I had a fantastic job of cleaning Shankar's oven, which had salt crystals all over it. Um, so <laughs> we, 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 did, we did some fun stuff on the way. Okay, does this heat decontamination system work? Well, yes. This here is the data. This is on the N95s. Uh, this is a series of masks, which you see they are about 95% and they stay there. Here is another different vendor. It's again about 95, slightly more, and it stays there. So there is no change in the filtration efficiency after five one-hour cycles of heating. We've also done this for different surgical masks, the high-quality masks, and the sort of more um, cheap masks. And again, all of them, you can heat them for five cycles. The, the, the first data point is a new mask. The next five are the next five heating cycles. Uh, efficiency remains the same. Particle filtration efficiency remains the same. So now it was time to take this. And um, with a lot of trepidation, I got a TIFR vehicle to take me and all these sensors and everything and go to the hospital and set it up, setting up there. They had a large drying cabinet. They had a large drying cabinet and we set up sensors everywhere. Now the question is you want to decontaminate lots of masks every day. How do you put them in? Many masks. Now the papers which we were following, uh, there's beautiful work from Harvard and Stanford. This is the work where they, this is, uh, they use, uh, they put the masks in uh, what are very probably very easily available in the US, rubber made boxes. And these rubber made boxes have lids. You put them in the lid and you can put exactly with a micro pipette, so many microliters of water in each. So it maintains a fixed humidity in it because the box is sealed, the volume is known, you can calculate the water. Uh, and, and this is what they do. Now, this of course, one thing is it requires all these rubber made boxes which can be sealed. It requires you to micro pipette water and it requires you to take the mask and put it inside the, uh, box. Now we want thinking, can we do this so that you don't have to touch the mask at all? And thankfully, Tata Memorial Hospital being a, having a very large chemotherapy section has lots of these uh, sickness bags. Okay. So these are paper sickness bags, the same bags you get on an aircraft, right? And the doctors use these bags to sew their masks. These bags are nice because they're open at the top. So if you want to air the mask, it's very good. And we thought that, yes, this is the easiest thing to use the the the, you know, the, the masks come in the bags, the bags are labeled. So nobody, you know, in the department that's doing this has to really touch the mask at all. The bags go into the oven, the bags come out of the oven. You don't touch the mask at all. Right? And I must really, 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 you know, uh, commend the work done at the hospital, uh, right from Dr. Pramesh, the director, down to the people in the sterilization section, the CSSD department, uh, you know, who, who have these machines. Um, I mean, it's, it's very hard to, be doing this day after day and you have to develop you know doing experiments on one mask and doing it that you can do this every day i mean you have to develop protocols who's getting their mask tested on monday tuesday wednesday thursday which section is coming what are the sops that are going to be required can i make it as foolproof as possible and at the end of it the results so far you know we started this may 28 there it's been used to two to three times a day until yesterday 6,360 masks have been processed, more than 1,000 doctors, nurses, whoever, 1,000 individuals have, you know, decontaminated their masks uh, using this uh, uh, drying cabinet. And this, I think, is perhaps the first heat-based decontamination trial that has been done in a large hospital setting. You know, there are other small trials run in labs, there are trials with, you know, a cohort size of, you know, 15 or something, but, you know, this is the first really large trial that at least uh, we are aware of that uses heat. Okay, uh, act three, more decontamination. Now, Tata Memorial Hospital is obviously a fantastic hospital. It's a very well equipped hospital. What about low resource ses 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 settings? What if you want to do this everywhere? You want to do it at home? Okay. Well, can you do this without a fancy temperature controlled oven? Can you do this if you don't have electricity? Sure you can. And there's been fantastic work from uh, Manu Prakash's group at Stanford. Uh, and we've had a lot of discussions on the N95 decon community uh, looking at hot water based decontamination. The idea is you take one vessel with hot water outside and you put a sealed vessel with your mask inside that hot water vessel and keep it covered for a while. It should work. It should reach more than you know, 70 degrees for some amount of time. Uh, well, they were doing it in you know, typical, again, US uh, Pyrex bowls and you know, uh, lids like this. And we thought that you know, we should actually try and do it in situations where most people are likely to use such things. So, um, um, you know, I offered that let's repeat these experiments and see whether we can do them over here. And uh, uh, these experiments have all been done in Surendra Kulkarni's kitchen. And, you know, most Indian kitchens have these standard metal vessels that you go one inside the other and you have a 
lid for every vessel. Okay, so you you basically boil two liters of water in one vessel, take it off the fire, put your mask in another vessel, put it in, cover both of them, and that's it. Now, obviously, we we were trying to do tests, so we had to put in wires for our temperature and humidity sensors. And remember, you know that what. I mean, these experiments were done in an air-conditioned lab in Stanford. Out here, we were doing it in a Raman kitchen with lots of breeze. Every day, the wind is different. The ambient temperature and humidity are different. Um, so it was. It was. We had to. We figured we have to insulate the vessel by putting some chadar outside it. But we actually went one step better. We figured that why do we restrict this to doing one mask in a small vessel? This is something we all have at home. We have idli cookers at home. With an idli cooker, I can do four masks. Whatever my size of the idli cooker is. we can do multiple masks at a time okay of course now does this work let's look at that yes so here are actually temperature and humidity profiles now remember that because of our little wire coming in uh, we used to try and seal it with aluminum foil so that there's no leak but in some cases we did have a leak humidity actually was not controlled it went almost till 100% so it was exposed to the water vapor but still that has an effect it's very very robust it has an effect in the filtration efficiency the filtration efficiency has been Around ninety-five uh, percent. Uh, so zero is the first one. One to five is single mask, and the sixth cycle is in the idli cooker. So uh, you know six cycles of heat, no change in efficiency. So if you want to do this, this is a very very simple way to do it. Are there other ways you can do it? Again, you know, uh, thanks to Kaushal Verma, uh, who is the uh, IISC coordinator of COVID Gyan, uh, he put me in touch with an IISC student, Amud Sahaje, fantastic young guy. Uh, after finishing off from ISC he is working with the babra tribal community in maharashtra on solar based various techniques and he is best known for making a 100 sun uh, project 100 times concentrating the, the sun and uh, we got in touch with trying to use solar energy for uh, mass decontamination okay so uh, there are two kinds of experiments that have been done now these experiments were done in amdavad because he had to move from nandurbar to amdavad because the monsoon had already come in maharashtra by then Ahmedabad was still having a little bit of sun, so we thought let's let's. Uh, he said he'd go there, and he had uh, contacts at IIM and some uh, uh, thing from there. So um, there are two kinds of experiments: one done with masks in the standard, uh, you know, the glass lid uh, solar cooker, and one with a solar concentrator. Now this is only a 10x concentrator, not a 100x. 100x will just burn your mask up. It's good for uh, waste waste incineration. 10x solar concentrator, and uh, so. It, I mean, masks have been heated for seven days in a row, ten hours each day. So in the morning, of course, you need a mirror. In the morning, you put a mirror to increase the amount of light you get in. As the day builds up, you don't want the mask temperature to go beyond ninety degrees. You don't want your polymers to get damaged because otherwise, the mask temperature will just shoot up. So you slowly start. You remove the the mirror. You put a cover, half of the glass, etc. You make sure that the temperature does not go above ninety degrees. So these things uh, are have been heated for seventy hours. Seven days, ten hours each day, and the concentrator one has been done for thirty-minute cycles because that goes up to almost near ninety degrees very quickly. So thirty-minute cycle, the break five times. Okay, so you know how do you, how would you like your mask? Well done. So we have well done masks, and uh, you know you often see fun things in the data. So look at this. So these are the blue dots are the ambient temperature outside in the day, just less than forty degrees in Ahmedabad. And the red dots are the temperature inside your solar cooker. So if it's a typical day, uh, that's how your temperature behaves. You're of course adjusting the amount of uh, the sunlight going in, and there's some clouds. Is that? Look at this one. Look at the one on the right, twenty-first. You notice there is this nice dip. I mean, of course, there are some dips over here. These are clouds, but uh, uh, notice this very nice long dip. And this was a solar eclipse day. So actually, uh, the mask testing setup also measured the uh, temperature dip because the sun was getting eclipsed. Just fun stuff. Does it work? Absolutely, yes. You can cook your masks for seventy hours, and in the solar cooker, they are still at ninety-five percent, same as the control mask, a new mask from the same batch. There's no change in particle filtration efficiency. So remember, even now there are parts of Africa, India probably is covered by monsoon, but there are still lots of parts of the world where there's enough sunlight for you to use a solar-based technique to do this. Um, we've also looked at this in an electron microscope to look at is there any change in morphology, and uh, you know the new mask versus the solar-cooked masks. There is uh, really no change in the surface morphology. 
Uh, by the way, don't worry about these white spots. This is just the this is the way uh, spun bond layers are made. This is the imprint of the roller that makes the spun bond layer. Not a, nothing. Um, okay, so that is solar decontamination, and then from N95s we move to surgical masks. Now, how good are these surgical masks? Unfortunately, there is a wide variation. Then the one that you get the 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 one you get in our stores. This is actually only a two-layer mask. It's only about twenty-five percent efficient. Some of the really, you can, you know, you can get them on the street. You can get them for two rupees. You can get them for fifteen rupees. There's a huge range, and it it really depends on what the material is. We've seen masks which are, you know, as low as twenty-five percent and as good as almost ninety-five percent. In fact, even better. I'll, I'll come to a bit. And um, we were discussing this on the N95 Decon group. And can one wash them? I mean, if they're anyway around the seventy percent point, seventy percent is still better than what you get with the, you know, say the TIFR T-shirt. uh this by the way folded two or three times will give you about 60% uh so can one can one uh, wash them and anyway you know we were discussing our work it's been very open all these things have been extremely open across the community we were telling them how we were tossing them in a washing machine for our recharging work and um, uh i was asked by uh, dr ashley she's a um, um uh, doctor from stanford but right now she's in dhaka uh, whether we could try this on surgical masks as well and the rationale was that there is going to be a very large uh, randomized control trial and mask usage uh, that's going to happen in bangladesh and uh, the idea is going to they're going to sample you know almost uh, 350000 people to look at things of more of a social nature um, of you know does it matter where the masks are distributed who recommends you know if if you're given the mask during a, a prayer in the mosque are you more likely to use it than if you just bought it if you wear a mask are you likely to go out of the house more often because you think you're protected you know and many of these questions being asked in this rct are 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 you know similar to what would happen in any high population density setting like india so i think it would be very relevant uh, this is led by uh, jason abelak at yale and steve newby in stanford with with many other many other people uh, and there's been a lot of discussion in this on the n95 decon community so i offered to wash mask i became a dhobi for two weeks and helping me was of course rehman from the lab and i got in touch with magnum magnum is one of the uh, the major uh, suppliers they are a niosh approved supplier of masks uh, and they have masks in all kinds they have uh, the regular masks which are like 3 rupees 50 paise and they have a very very good mask which is 11 rupees i mean these are retail prices in bulk so uh, the viroguard mask is something in the middle and it all seems to depend on what kind of melt blown polypropylene layer is there and all of them are are you know for at 3 microns or for droplets etc they're all 99% plus no problem and the viroguard actually is a mask which is tested to various standards and meets some european norms and it's you know they said it was their best mask and we 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 carried out some measurements on them and yes you know the new masks even at 0.3 microns the viroguard actually is almost 98% efficient like it's and it has you know we we because of shankar's work on charging we could measure charge it has the same charge it is very very similar like an n95 it looks like the same n95 material just in a rectangular form and not in this cup shape form that's all so uh, there were these masks and we had to wash them and we would like to wash them in the same manner that people in villages would wash them so we uh, developed a protocol with uh, some people in bangladesh uh, and something and we decided that the way most people wash them would take the cheapest detergent bar available wheel detergent tikia and rub the mask with it as a control we also washed it with surf powder detergent hand washed everything and it's amazing that a, a new mask uh, you know water droplets don't stick on it in a good mask you can spray water water will not stick on it the outer surface is hydrophobic so the moment you touch it with your bar of soap it starts soaking in water and then we you know you have to really rinse all the soap out of it and they've been dried in the lab and uh, uh, we did these wash trials um, washing these masks initially once 10 times 20 times and it's very interesting it's very interesting that uh, these masks obviously they will lose their charge the viroguard look at it it loses its charge but then it stabilizes at about an 80% value i mean 80% filtration of something after 20 washes is is fantastic right uh, this is really good and there are some other masks we we don't there are some of these masks they actually go up on the first wash which we don't understand you know are there particles sticking to the mask which are actually coming out in the new mask and once you wash them they are gone and hence you are measuring sort of the actual material so they are quite they are quite uh, obviously uh, you know washing scrubbing with a bar is far more abrasive far more dangerous the lower quality mask after the you know till the 10th wash they hold up but then then they sort of start packing up 
uh, but this is again, this is data. I think that nobody has done such experiments of taking masks and washing them twenty times. Uh, might be kind of sort of boring, but still, it's uh, useful. And again, we've we've checked them that there is no change in the morphology of the mask fibers um, after subjecting to them the uh, washing. Okay. Finally, before I end, some fun stuff. We have a tester, so we can measure masks, and we've uh, been uh, you know working with some other people as well. So the first thing is you know valve mask. These masks with valves, terrible, terrible. Please don't use it. For the sake of all of us, please don't use this. If you have to use it, put a tape over it. Look, you see, this this thing has a tape over it. Okay. I mean, this a mask is supposed to protect other people as well. It's supposed to protect your own droplets going out. An exhalation valve provides a zero resistance path for things going out. You don't want it. Okay. And it's meant for comfort. It's meant for people in mines. It's meant for people scraping walls. It's not meant for a COVID-19 like situation. It defeats the whole purpose of mask use. And there have been lots of lots of uh, things on it, but you know. Uh, it was a big fight. Uh, in fact, we even wrote to the government, and now they've at least said for medical people they should not uh, use this. And the, this we saw in our data as well. Now, just ignore the numbers, okay? There's some, there's something. In a new mask, there's no change when you open or shut the valve. But the moment you, you know, use this mask for a while, and this is steam, uh, the mask, this thing has a, the valve has a rubber gasket in it. Rubber is a sticky material. You have a huge humidity in Mumbai. Once you have this humidity, some dust particle will stick to it, and then it's no longer 95. Right? The mask is you will get leakage through your mask as well. So please never use these things. That's what the second thing is. The other thing is you got to be aware of advertisements and hype. Everybody is trying to make a mask. Remember, N95 is a particular US standard that it meet has to meet. Similarly, there's KN95, a Chinese standard, FFP2. There are lots of other masks. But you can't just come up with your own standard, a P95 mask and an L95 mask and something, and then a W95 mask. Right? And then people claim that, oh, we've got them tested somewhere. Okay. And they're washable, they're reusable, but there's no data. Don't believe anything with no data. And, you know, we've had, we've had, see, it's very easy to get 100% efficiency. I can take a stainless steel vati and hold it against my nose. That's going to be 100% efficient. Nothing is going to go through stainless steel vati, but I can't breathe. If I get something and I put polyurethane foam, all the air is going to be, you're not going to be breathing through your mask. You're going to be breathing air from the sides of the mask. Okay. And then there are people who will, you know, put things like it's certified by Citra. You're not supposed to say certified by Citra. Citra has said, don't say certified by Citra. So you got to be very careful of reading beyond the hype. One of the big things is this confusion between three microns and 0.3 microns. People will call their mask as a standard flip card or something. People will call their mask an N95 and then say the bacterial filtration efficiency is better than 95%. That's not correct. So you have to be really, and we have we have measured many of these masks, and you are better off taking a you know multiply folded handkerchief, dupatta, t-shirt, whatever, than using a you know spending 500 rupees for some very expensive mask, which is which is not not uh, worth it. Uh, okay. Uh, I also helped some people who really wanted to make masks. So this is the Pune Mask Action Group, which came out of the National Chemical Labs, the Venture Center. Uh, thanks to Premnath. Premnath, of course, I know him for many years. He was my batchmate from IIT, and they wanted to make masks. And we got talking about it. And you know, how is it? And you know, it was it was an amazing period where they used to test out different materials for masks, work on it, make some prototypes, send somebody in a car from this is during the hard lockdown, send somebody in a car from Pune from NCL to BIFR. The guy would leave at five o'clock in the morning, come and give me the masks in the morning by eight thirty. I would make the measurements in the morning and send them data. And again, they would go back at night and work on improving it. And, you know, they started at 84% and they made various iterations, change this layer, change that layer. And, you know, I always have a control mask to make sure my measurements are okay. And it took them a lot of tries before they could actually get to the 95% number. Now they have it. They've got it qualified properly from other places. But it's a very difficult game to actually, you know, making one filtration measurement and having a process where you're going to churn out masks day after day and have them reliably give the same number is, is very, very difficult. And, and just remember that, you know, most of these places, Citra, if you send them a mask, they don't test the full mask. They don't test the mask like we do with the tape and, you know, everything matters. They actually cut out a circle from your mask and just test the filtration efficiency in a small area. And many times we've seen, even with the Pune mask, the same mask which was performing a week back, a different batch of material doesn't meet it. It's suddenly gone from 90 something to 82. So making masks is actually not a trivial game at all. Okay, uh, last two slides. I know I'm almost out of time here. Uh, 
so there are lots and lots of people with ideas for must and uh, uh, you know the problem is it's very difficult to test and we have a mask tester so i get every day a few mails saying that i have this mask can i come and uh, test and yes i'm usually more than happy to engage with people uh, currently we are working on a very different kind of a, a mask design this is more like a powered air purifying re uh, respirator so this is like a plastic bag that seals over your head and i have been the bakra for the tests as you can see uh, uh, and that has a little fan that sucks in air to these standard these filters are standard anesthesia machine filters so they are they are known filters and they work um, and uh, there's a battery pack that you can use and it will blow air it needs to be optimized for actual usage but we are looking at the filtration efficiency etc so this is uh, with a group uh, uh, at uh, kasturba and uh, actors buildings uh, with an iit bombay there's a group trying to get away from this charge idea and use nanofibers uh, we don't know if it will work but uh, 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 with the biosciences department there uh, we're trying to make some measurements on nanofiber mass i haven't spoken about ultraviolet at all i've also been i was so disappointed with some of the ultraviolet systems being made that i actually offered that listen i'll help you design a box at least make a proper box that works so um, uh, you know uh, we're trying to really make boxes that could be used and uh, you know over the last few months what i found is that this collaborative spirit that has come up it's amazing i mean there are so many people i have never met i have only either talked to them or seen them on a zoom call perhaps but that's about it and once goes covid goes away i don't know whether we're going to continue with this collab sometimes i feel this is like a flash mob that has just come together it's going to perform and then disappear or will we you know continue to work in this collaboration is beautiful it can allow you to do so many things and not just collaboration between you know shankar and me in dfr or between scientists but to be scientists and society at large and i think that's been the biggest learning for me it's been a fantastic experience so my take home messages are basically that you know we have a compact low cost filtration efficient setup that we can use for masks and we've seen that you know all masks are not the same there's also a huge proliferation of bad quality masks in the market you have to be very careful n95 masks you can decontaminate and reuse them it's very possible it's there are easy solutions i think heat is one very easy solution no matter where you are in the world you can burn wood you can use solar cooking you can do something you can always get some heat and uh, i'm very happy i mean to see the system that you've made in the lab being scaled up and used by somebody in the hospital has been really really rewarding i can't tell you how rewarding it has been and uh, even with the surgical masks just imagine you know if we could use this 10 times instead of once the amount of waste we are generating thanks to covid this is all polypropylene based fiber stuff you can't you know it's not biodegradable so i think even from that point it's good to see if we can reuse masks and i have had a lot of fun learning about masks in the past five months i hope i could share some of it with you and i hope you agree that it's not a joke but it's about masks the only problem is <laughs> reality reality hits you hard okay reality hits you hard and i'm going to leave you with two cartoons about this is the situation of mask usage i think if only people in india used a mask properly we would not still be having 65000 cases every day i mean people use it as a chin ornament and everything else and i actually got my joke from a poster in marathi that i saw called maskari which lists all the ways of not wearing a mask properly <laughs> thanks a lot and i'm happy to take questions fantastic arnab that is a fantastic colloquium i would like to thank arnab for this uh, wonderful colloquium uh, very very exciting uh, in terms of uh, understanding our own under increasing our understanding of how to use masks and decontaminate them um so i would also invite uh, my co-host uh, dr satyanarayana to be on the screen for a second um satya if you could just come yeah there will be questions yeah Satya, um, thank you very much for being through this. There were some issues, but uh, thank you for resolving them. Um, so we will do this. We will going to take questions. We have questions at the YouTube channel, which we are going to take, as well as we have questions uh, through the Zoom um, Zoom so, session. So I would like to mention uh, the YouTube questions are on chat. I mean, uh, are yeah, yeah. Sure yes. Yeah, read I'm going out? to. I'll read. Okay, you read them out. Okay, okay. Yes. Fine. Yeah. I, I'm not I, going I just to wanted YouTube. to. I just wanted to mention Arnab that uh, Dr. Pramesh is here, the director of TMH. Uh, so I, I would um, like uh, Dr. Pramesh, if there are any comments you would like to make, uh, this is this would be an ideal opportunity for you to make. Uh, 
Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jyotishman, and uh, thank you, Arnab, for uh, letting me know about this. Uh, uh, I, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Pramesh. I mean, I can see that you're probably stepping out of a surgery and coming here, but, you know, thank you so much for your time. No, no, no. Uh, I, I didn't want to miss this. I joined in about 10 minutes late, but I guess I still caught you uh, at a time when uh, you were beginning to talk about uh, the work that we did together. I think I got you the right time because that's the time you mentioned about my uh, WhatsApp message to you on a Sunday morning. <laughs> so, no, but uh, seriously, I think the work that we've been doing together has been uh, amazing. Uh, from one, from a science point of view, because it's been fascinating to see the kind of experiments that uh, Arnab's been doing, the, the, the nuts and bolts of developing something under very extenuating circumstances. The time when we started it was when the Mumbai lockdown was complete, not what you're seeing down the partial lockdown that you have now. And to be able to get together all those uh, sundry household items and make a testing center out of it uh, was, was uh, amazing. But from a very real uh, life point of view, what it actually translated into was uh, at a time when we had a severe shortage of N95 masks, uh, uh, regular surgical masks, to be able to offer a safe way of uh, uh, decontaminating them and uh, reusing them. So we always were aware of the extended usage, which means that uh, the, the easiest solution, which uh, Arnab mentioned, just keep it out for 96 hours and reuse them. That was something that we were aware of, but that still wasn't enough to cater to the number of people who uh, we needed to supply. And that's when the decontamination part came out. And to be honest, I wasn't uh, completely convinced when we started off. I just thought we'll do the extended use anyway. We'll use it uh, every uh, five days and uh, see what comes out of it. And what we did was actually decontaminate after five uses. So which meant that not only was uh, a mask used ex with an extended use uh, strategy, but by decontaminating it, we were able to double and triple it. And uh, considering the fact that we've now decontaminated over 6,000 masks, uh, I think uh, the, the impact that it has had has been uh, outstanding and it's phenomenal. Uh, at a time, again, when uh, you have a shortage, when uh, your employees are worried about contracting the disease because they were not uh, adequately equipped, so we were one of the very few hospitals which decided to go uh, upfront with N95s for all the employees, regardless of whether they were directly patient facing or not. And that gives us so much of comfort in knowing that our empl employees are well protected and the fact that they realize that we are doing everything that's possible because they too realize that uh, getting N95s at that time, and we were talking April, May, June here, when uh, N95s weren't uh, use, uh, available as easily as they are now. And to be able to do that well, uh, even coming to the final part of it, which is uh, testing new uh, products that we were uh, bombarded with. So if you go out into the market now, you'll get N95s for anything from uh, 38 rupees to 350 rupees. And strangely, cost has nothing to do with the quality of these masks. It's not a given that if you pay more, you get better. Often it's the reverse. There's a reverse concordance. I mean, there's a discordance between uh, what you pay and what you actually get. So it's, it's, it's been a fascinating journey. And as uh, Arnab mentioned, I didn't know Arnab existed till about 15 minutes before the WhatsApp message that I sent him. And within half an hour of that, we were together on a on a group uh, Zoom call, and uh, uh, it, 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 we've come a long way since then. So, so extremely grateful to the entire group at TIFR, and it, it's been fascinating. And, and this is one of those areas where you actually start getting faith in science again. So, to many uh, uh, many people in uh, the gen many of the general public, science is all where you sit in a laboratory, make fumes come out, and colors change by mixing chemicals and uh, you, you, you test yeah. some very vague gloss which we learned in school. But this was a time when it actually translated into something which was, which was, which was the need of the hour. And I think that's the, the, the restoration of faith uh, in, in science is something which I see as a very positive step coming out of COVID. And again, uh, what uh, Arnab mentioned yesterday, I mean, uh, mentioned today about collaborations and hoping that it continues beyond COVID is something that all of us hope for. So the fact that it took a pandemic to get TIFR and TMC, both DAE institutions to work together on something which was of, of common good is, is something that uh, uh, we can only be grateful to COVID for. And I'm very certain that this is not the end of the collaboration. And I'm very hopeful that these kind of multidisciplinary collaborations keep growing as, as even after the COVID uh, pandemic gets over. 
thank you very much dr pramesh arnab you want to respond to that no i mean it's been it's been amazing to be able to work with you know i had i had i mean the only thing i knew about last 20 years but i had gone to tmh once from iit bombay as a, one of these field trips to see the spect system or something over there um and apart from that once a year i donate blood that's about it uh, when they come here uh, but that was it there's been really no interaction and you know, i'm like the guy who's scared of hospitals i don't want to go to a hospital but uh, no this has been a it's a fantastic learning experience and uh, uh, i have learned so much i just can't i'm grateful for this okay thank you satya can we start the uh, the questions from the youtube link that would be great yeah yeah it's okay so arna are you ready yes okay so the, the question answers. from faisal azbi uh, the question is decontamination in the idli maker so the question is about that what is the time for which the mask must be decontaminated uh, should we be careful about uh, any maximum temperature that must not be exceeded if yes how do we control okay so let me just try and uh, wait let me just go back to that slide actually uh let me just see if i can go back okay there we are so the idea is remember that what we are doing is uh you cannot exceed you are putting boiling water you're not the thing is not on the fire you first boil the water you put boiling water inside a large vessel and you put a smaller vessel inside this and you cover both vessels now if i look at the next thing the temperature will will initially rise pretty quickly and then it will sort of stay at this value and then when you open the lid it will fall down okay so the temperature will remain you need temperature above 70 degrees for at least half an hour all right that's what you need you need temperature above 70 degrees with 50% humidity for about half an hour and in our case the problem is the humidity was way too high we were putting 10 drops of water we you know you can take a small bit of tissue paper soaked in water but we had to actually keep cutting down on the humidity because it was it was it was too high and the our ambient humidity itself is was close to 90 so uh, i think it's uh, you know it it's it's difficult to overheat the mask in this it won't go above that that temperature obviously you will have to do experiments because the idli cooker so uh, uh, for example the uh, this the last curve down is the idli cooker the humidity actually went down a bit because the vessel is much larger so uh, you will have to play with it and do this experiment once and try it out but i don't expect very much of a difference so it's difficult to uh, you know you you can't even, and most of these masks we've seen even if you have 100% humidity nothing happens to it uh, uh, so it should be fine but it's always good to test out with one mask first okay and i i must say that our idli cooker experiments though we can put four masks we didn't have four probes we didn't have four temperature and humidity probes to measure them independently so we've actually measured one in this okay 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 uh, so let us go to another uh, related question uh, i read an article online which mentioned that uh, heating the n95 masks in a pressure cooker for 50 minutes is effective for reusing those is this correct this is from vinayak mishra in a pressure cooker without the whistle Uh, yeah, it's probably so. a very similar arrangement, right? Yeah. So the idea is as long as you can give it moist heat above seventy for uh, an an hour. I mean, okay, the no, standard no. autoclaving cycle works. Autoclaving, which is one hundred and twenty degrees for fifteen minutes, the standard cycle also works. The only problem is it tends to damage the fit of the mask. For many, mm. not all models will survive, especially these cup-shaped masks. They deform above at that temperature. So that is the only thing. But otherwise, you could auto. You know, in principle, I think. Uh, holding it above steam and the thing the only thing i would be careful about if you are heating it directly in thing where we had this uh, first experiment on you know putting it above the hot boiling water is that if you have a mask which has an see this has an internal uh, clip but there are some masks which have an external nose clip and that can fall off if the glue comes up at high temperature okay uh, another uh, couple of similar questions uh, on spraying uh, we can get hydrogen can we get probably hydrogen peroxide in any chemist does spraying it on surgical mask work uh, i have not seen any data to that so i cannot comment on that okay. another okay. one uh, that says yeah. is and the uh, problem with, with hydrogen peroxide is you, i mean it's corrosive right i mean if you're spraying yeah. 30, i mean you don't want to have any residue on it on your mask okay similar okay. question somebody asked about detol solution uh, so okay uh, i think we are there similar uh, just a minute 
Thank you. Very useful. Also working on related topic. Can I, okay. I can uh, I can I take and come back. Can I take some questions internally also? Yeah, I'm almost done. Just give me a second. Uh, I'm also working on related uh, topic in my in my MSc dissertation. Uh, the slide you shown under electron microscope, the non ovens of mass are affected after washes. Does this not affect the efficiency? Can you repeat the question? And what is affected? Uh, says the non-ovens of mass. No, no, they are, they, they are, they are not affected. I mean, after washes. They, I mean, no, no. So, okay, uh, this is uh, cooking, but um, I, I have similar data after washing also. I mean, uh, I have the data after washing. Uh, yeah, you showed that slide. I, think I showed it somewhere. Uh, I, 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 I have. It, it, there is. There is really no change, no change that I, I can notice, uh, you know, no, no significant change that I notice after washing. Okay. okay. Uh, so I think JD, you can uh, go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, this is we it. will come back to the YouTube again, if, if there yeah. are questions. Okay. Um, uh, the, uh, internally, we had a question raised hand from uh, Rajiv Gawai. Rajiv, are you here? Um, can you hear us? If not, then I will move to Pushan. Pushan was waiting for some question. I think Pushan, uh, Pushan, if you're there. Um, okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is a hypothetical question. Uh, if your hydrophobicity of the surface is very important, you understand? You, you are saying that the, that the surface becomes less hydrophobic after washing. And that maybe kills the efficiency quite a lot. Is, is there a simple hydrophobic spray that uh, does not harm uh, anything? No, no, you don't have you don't have to worry about it. Once okay. you rinse it enough, it becomes hydrophobic yeah. again. Okay, if you dry it, dry it properly, then it becomes hydrophobic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can I can show you a mask which is uh, twenty times washed, and we can put some water on it, and it's still hydrophobic. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I, I, I I believe you. Okay, fine. Thanks. That's that's all. Okay, okay. Uh, questions uh, from. Uh, the participants in the Zoom? Yes, Amol. Amol, could you come up and unmute yourself? Yeah. Hey, one of the, the setup that you showed in your slides, uh, maybe one of the first ones in your lab, you had some pressure regulating uh, control on the left hand side. What was that? I was really curious about. Uh, yeah, okay, the pressure <laughs> regulator, just a sec. Um, what is the job of that? So I am measuring the pressure differential across the mask. So okay. maybe, if, maybe not, maybe just one slide, maybe before this. There was uh, a, just a second. Just show a on second. the side. So yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. What you're saying. Um, this guy, the differential pressure sensor? Yeah, you know, oh. no, no, but they may be okay, the earlier slide. Yeah, 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 way before, right? The, the schematic. Okay, okay this one. Uh, this one, the differential pressure sensor. Yeah, this one. Right. Yeah, yeah. So the idea yeah. is. If I want to get a number for how breathable the mask is, right? If if the mask is has offers no resistance at all, I will measure zero difference in pressure. But mm -hmm. any mask will offer me some some difference. And a surgical mask, for example, has to have not more than so many pascals per centimeter square area pressure difference across it. If it's more than that, you will have, find difficulty breathing. So. The differential pressure across a mask is a metric for how breathable your mask is. And uh, while we don't have a way of comparing or measuring directly to so many pascals per centimeter squared, uh, we can measure the millivolts across it and compare it to an N95. You know, we know that this is a standard N95 mask. It meets the specs. It's breathable enough. Compared to this, is this mask way worse or better? Right. And we have seen that some masks, I mean, if you want to get better filtration, you tend to pack it with more layers, but then it becomes beyond the cutoff of what is breathable. So use this just for getting a control, or did you have to adjust something? No, so no, no. We don't, this is measure. just a this is just a measure. This is pressure just measure. a measurement of the differential pressure. We're not controlling anything. The only thing we can control is the flow. We can sort of throttle the pump and control how much air we suck. So. We, by the way, I should also um, uh, clarify that we are doing these measurements with the little pump that we have, uh, which again, we take off from some other setup, uh, is about uh, 10 liters a minute to 30 liters a minute. So if I open the thing up completely, I can go out to 30 liters a minute. But we do most of our measurements around 10 liters a minute. That's like your typical breathing rate. Uh, 
the ASTM test for the mask actually is at 95 liters a minute. Uh, they they require the mask meet the specification at 95 liters a minute. Now naturally, the more you pull, uh, the more you will get uh, leakage from the sun. So that's something which uh, okay. no, we 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 don't control the differential pressure at all. That's decided by the mask material. Okay. Well, there is just one uh, request from uh, in the chat box that from Mitradeep, can you please put up the instructions of decontamination of mass in various languages, somewhere, say in TIF or website or somewhere else within the campus. COVID gyan, we are we are writing it up and hopefully uh, uh, should send this out to COVID gyan in a bit. Okay, um, uh, there uh, is a Pushan? question from Gautam. Gautam Pushan? model. Okay. Pushan, do you have your hand up? I mean, I can. Yeah, yeah, hand up, but yeah. Push Pushan. 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 Uh, see, how does it, uh, Dr. Pravesh was saying that they use the, the same mask five times before before washing. So how, yeah, yeah. So, so, so the thing is, how does the visibility change from, from, you, from one use to second use before washing? So, so, so no, 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 that we, we don't know that. We don't, yeah. no, they don't wash it. They don't, they don't wash it. Yeah, they, I'm are, they use it five times before it. Yeah, so, so, so what they were doing is every doctor was given five masks and five yeah. of these bags. You use mask on one on Monday and then you put it in the bag. You use mask you on Tuesday and put it in the bag. And then you come back and seven days later, you pick up that mask and you know, whatever, on the end day you okay, pick okay. up that mask and you use it. So that is the one trial. But remember that will also allow mold and all to grow beyond a certain point because you're, you're breathing out humid air, you know, in this. Exactly. So uh, initially, but they had already started with that. So when we started the heat decon, there were masks which were, had been kept out like this and had been cycled. So even those masks have gone through this process. That's what I think. That's all what he was saying. Okay. So okay. There is a combination of both the tables. Okay. So so uh, Gautam, Gautam. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, Anup. Uh, Hi. Okay. So um, you know, so you say that you know the fitting uh, is a very important thing. And uh, so it has to be tightly fit. Um, uh, and what's the criterion for, uh, you know, what, how much tightly fit is the right kind of tightly fit? How do I know that it's correctly tightly fit? Uh, what kind of mask do you use? Uh, let's say, so, what do you call it? The beak type, the, the beak stuff. Okay, the, the duck bill. So the idea is this, the idea is, Remember that it depends on the mask. If I have a surgical mask, this is not designed to tightly fit, right? The, okay. the reason for these pleats and all is so that air can escape at the sides. Your air, the, the exhaled breath actually goes backwards in this mask or from the bottom or from the top or something, not front. That's the only thing. Right. The N95 mask, which is, uh, okay, let's take this. This is like a duck bill if I do it this way. Uh, if I do it, this, if I hold it like this, Ideally, when you breathe in, you should sort of see the mask come in. I mean, you, you should feel the, uh, you know, you should, you know, you can feel the mask uh, sort of get sucked in uh, if you breathe in hard. Uh, and I mean, that, there are ways to test it. The standard way is actually people spray some, uh, uh, you know, particles which uh, have a smell. And if you can inhale, if you can smell it, that means it's leaking from the sides. Uh, so there are standard tests, but the sort of dummies a test is after you put it on. Uh, you just make sure that when you when you breathe it in, it sort of completely seals at the side, and you don't have feel any air leaking from the side. And your mask will then deform because um, that's like a very sort of you know, sort of test. I see. I, uh, okay, thank you. I think I got it. Uh, yeah. but anyway, uh, Gautam, I mean, yes. if you are if you are like how you were before the lockdown, and if you are like me with this beard right now, uh, mm -hmm. beards are very bad for masks to seal. So. <laughs> oh, okay. I see. Okay, <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, Alok has a question, and then Sat I will ha hand over to Satya for the YouTube ones. Alok, 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 Ray. Yeah, um, Ornab, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, so um, there are these um, uh, in the three-layer masks which have been uh, which have been sort of um, uh, the so-called homemade masks yeah. um, you build around a surgical mask but you will you know you um, uh, you know put in several other layers and you sew them together have you been able to test any of these things and uh, how they perform and how do they perform after these washing cycles uh, so my standard mask is a tifr t-shirt 
right? And um, uh, I have tested the IFR T-shirts with uh, with basically the same fabric, uh, three layers, four layers, etc. And uh, they will they will block out large droplets very well. Uh, they will block about fifty percent of the um, small droplets, 0.3 micron droplets, as well at you know three layers. Uh, I'm saying. And often, actually, this hosiery material is actually very good. In fact, a old T-shirt often functions better than a new T-shirt for the larger one micron kind of sizes because the old T-shirt fibers get frayed and they actually have a lot more, you know, surface area kind of stuff. So uh, it's not necessarily that. But again, the problem is every every T-shirt banya and everybody's thing is different. So it's very difficult. But most cloth masks are actually. Very good at the large droplet size, which is what you mostly care about. Because yes, it is airborne and it might be something, but still, maximum transmission possibility is if there is somebody else and there are cough droplets or large droplets. Yes, it's it, there can also be fine droplets. You want to get rid of them as much, but even then, you have 50% at the very small sizes. But for large droplets, these the cloth masks are two-layer cloth masks are very good. Um, not, not you know, three layers of like chiffon kind of very thin cloth. I mean, three layers of reasonable, I mean, hosiery material kind of cloth. Uh, you also don't want a very coarse grained. Uh, uh, like my my khadi kurtas are not very good. They have lots of gaps between the their their the, the, their, their are gaps. They're, it's almost like a knitted thing. Huh? It's like very a knitted material will have lots of gaps between the the. Okay. Um, uh, so, JD, I want to just take just one question, which yes. is again very similar to what Alak asked. This is uh, Ayush Gulani. He is actually, instead of t shirts and so on, asking about uh, handkerchief. So, Indians are, you know, Indians used to prefer handkerchiefs. So, can't we improve handkerchief instead of buying, uh, let us say, mask with money? So the, the problem with the, the handkerchief is actually not a bad solution. In fact, uh, the one thing about a handkerchief is that uh, when you typically use a handkerchief, uh, you sort of you know tie it around and it actually goes all the way down to your neck. Right? The handkerchief, the patta, etc. The way people use it. Uh, so it it uh, you know it, it sort of gives you a little bit of additional. It's a little, want to you know there's a path that something would have to take to go in is a little bit but if it's only two layers and your handkerchief is thin it's not doing much of it it's hardly doing 20 percent not, not more than uh, with a handkerchief if you can seal the sides uh, you will do much better if you can seal it like in this drawing uh, but again you need to have a sufficiently thick handkerchief or you need to have at least you know then i would i would uh, make it three or four layers in fact if you go to the uh, uh, the Homemade mask designs by the Prime Minister Scientific Advisor's Office. There are designs for no stitching, how you just fold a handkerchief, and you can get something which is a much more effective way than the triangular thing tying around your neck. So uh, there are ways in which you can fold your handkerchief and 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 get pretty decent filtration as well. So uh, there are lots of designs of homemade masks, and many of it, uh, many of them are better than others. Satya. Okay. Yeah. So I am done. Uh, so. Okay. Okay. So I, I think Dr. Pramesh wants to say something. Dr. Pramesh, do you want to say say something here? Uh, I see your mic is unmute, unmuted. Yeah, I, I just had a one uh, additional point to what Arnab mentioned about the fit of the mask. Another very easy way of uh, uh, figuring out whether the mask fit is good is for those who are wearing glasses, uh, make sure that the uh, the nose clip is uh, as tight as it can be against your cheek. And then keep breathing in and out. If your glasses fog, it means that your fit fit not good. It means it's allowing your breath to come out, and uh, it's allowing whatever is outside to come in as well. So that's a fairly. Um, we lost you, Dr. Pramesh. Satya, I think we lost him, right? Can you hear me now? I think he's back. Yeah. yeah he's back. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Dr. Pramesh, we lost you for a second. Right. So, so it's just that uh, a simple way of figuring out whether your N95 mask fit is good or not is for those who wear glasses, 
uh, after you wear the mask and you uh, use the nose clip to tightly approximate your skin try and breathe in and out if your glasses fog it means that the fit is not right and you need to do it better okay so either the elastic needs to be tighter or your nose clip needs to be uh, uh, more closely approximated to the skin so this is a fairly simple way of figuring out whether your uh, n95 mask uh, fit is good or not okay great thank you and and, and if i may if i may actually add i know many doctors who in in a hospital setting have micropore tape and they actually just tape their mask to their skin they just tape the edges if it they find it's weak right Okay. Okay, Satya. Yeah. Okay. So, all questions are done. Yeah, all questions are done. Okay. Okay. So let's let's then thank. Uh, so Satya, you want to thank the speakers? Ah, no, no, no. Please go ahead. Actually, I definitely would like to thank uh, Arnab for such a wonderful work, and I think it has been articulated a few times both by you and uh, the director T M H by saying that uh, this is one of the probably the best example uh, in recent times that uh, once again. that pure science basic science the way he said is very nice so the, that actually uh, helped and affect the people on the street and when it is actually requiring the most and so to both of you and also many of your collaborators who are part of this uh, we all thank you for you know coming up with such a nice thing yeah i mean i must again emphasize it's been a great team effort uh, with all the students many of them were just stuck here after the lockdown uh, shankar of course um, who knows everything about everything in physics at least before you ask him he has an idea at least and uh, doesn't say no uh, to try and figure out stuff and uh, been you know a great fantastic learning experience so thank you all for being with us in this journey thank you so we will sign off and uh, just uh, wanted to tell all of you that our youtube channel watch that space tifr platinum jubilee events it's maintained by dr satyanarayana and this um this entire live event will be actually put as a video um and you can view it again later um there is absolutely no concerns you can send email questions um uh, to our dr arnab bhattacharya as well as to dr shankar ghosh uh, both the team leaders in this project and um uh, we they will be happy to respond to your questions um as well as put your questions on the comments underneath the video uh that would be very helpful so from uh, dr satyanarayana and me um it was fantastic to have all of you today with us we would like to thank you again and we will close this session today satya thank you yeah thanks jd thanks arnab yeah thank you